Hey guys, it's Matt with Olympus Reptiles, and well, I have balls, and today on camera I'm going to play with them and share them with you. Let's talk about some ball pythons. I'm, I know, it's corny, and it's like our humor stopped when we were like in fifth grade or sixth grade or something, but I keep trying to find new ways to start these videos, so you're just going to have to bear with me through it. Uh, what I want to show today are some of the things that we've hatched this season. We're probably just a little past the midpoint in our egg hatching this year. And some of the clutches that we're really excited about have hatched. So I want to share with you some of the things that I think that myself and camera guy Kurt are most proud of for hatching this year. And talk to you about why we're excited about those snakes. So, we'll kind of start with some. And so you've seen most of these before. You know, but it's kind of cool to have them all in one video. And first up is our buddy, the Shits. Of course, this is Champagne Blitz. And you can see this thing's just doing amazing. There's a little Mickey Mouse head. I think it looks like Mickey Mouse. Maybe I'm the only one. And not Mickey Mouse. We'll call it Mikey Mouse. So Disney doesn't sue me. Mikey Mouse. Let's go with that. <laughs> Otherwise they'll want a pound of flesh. But you can see, and that's also a really good indicator of that blitz. Because you can see it trying to hook there. You can also see it really hooking in there. Making like those double hurricanes. It's hooking there. There's no doubt. If you had doubt that blitz was in here, it certainly is. A really cool animal. And I still love the color. Nice and light. Just just gorgeous. And Kurt, if I miss one that you're proud of, you gotta tell me, okay, buddy? You should say like, okay. That way people know you're like actually there. Camera guy Kurt is back. I know we had to film one without him not too long ago. He's back from his little vacation. Back being crazy slave labor for us. And Question Girl is now gone. She'll be back next time we do videos, I'm sure. This is another one we're really proud of. Oh, coconut my. And this is, of course, that uh, Blitz Calico. And again, just, it came out, you know, we knew we were going to have a good shot at making these two that we thought were nobody else had done. Uh, but the way this came out, and the way that one came out, the heavy pattern I really liked, and just the tail on that, just that whole back end from here to here is one of the craziest looking snakes. And I just, I'm really excited to see it grow up. And see how it looks as an adult. So this is going to definitely stay with us. It's going to be a keeper as well as just really extremely proud to hatch that out. I mean, just amazing, amazing animal. So we'll put that back in there. And I got two more I want to share with you. Two more. Let's go in. And I'm saving my favorite for last. This is one we're really proud of too. I didn't tell Kurt this was one of the ones I was pulling out, but he's going to figure it out here pretty quick. I just love this morph. Like, I was super excited to get a chance to breed these, and really happy when three of them popped out, and I was blown away by how they look. This is the black pastel banana. All that lavender is just so pretty. And people that have talked to me, and I know some of you have gotten hold of me personally, that have banana stuff, they're always like, oh, what would I put with a banana? And I always say something dark. Darken it up. Bring in that lavender. I really, really like it. I, I'm not as big of a fan as brightening your bananas because it's already super bright, but when you darken it, it's just out of this world. That being said, just because I'm not a fan of brightening it, if you are, you know, you do you. Everybody's got a different eye, and that's what makes this all fun. But I love this snake. I think it's amazing looking. Couldn't have been happier with how they came out, and it was really, really, really exciting to hit these banana black pastels. All right, Kurt, any guesses on what the last one is? A uh, normal? Yeah, it's a normal. No, it's not a normal. Most of you who watch this regular already know the next snake I'm going to pull out. I, I guarantee those that watch this all the time are like, just get it out already, because we know. Uh, this was a culmination of... I shouldn't say a culmination. I, I always say that, and that's kind of not true. But this was the project that got me started, and it's kind of a beginning in some ways. Because now this opens the door for me to do so many things I want to do with this animal. I just am so excited about the future now. Not that I wasn't excited before. But before all the excitement was around making this little guy. Come here, little buddy. I'm going to make you nervous. Captain Hissy Pants here. was around making this little guy. And now that I've made him, that excitement's just building on what I can make with him. That is, of course, Zeus, our zebra bee. Just... I just love this guy. He's had one shed. He's had two meals. He eats like a boss, which is awesome. 
Maybe if we sit him down here, he might come out for us and say hi. But I just love what Exanthic does. I love getting rid of the yellow. I know these things are going to turn more of a slight silvery black and white as they age. They almost end up looking like the spider Exanthics look when they're born. Not quite, but they'll, they'll darken. It's like all bees do. But with this as a beginning, some of the other things I'm working on in anticipation of creating him, I will be able to eventually make snakes that are pure black and white and stay that way. I truly believe I can do that. I think I know some combinations that will help us along the way. And I'm working on making them. But you can just see how cool that head is. And he is just an amazing animal. I think he wants to eat my face right now. Of course, you know, they're babies. So I don't handle them too much. It's hard not to. Because he is just <laughs> the neatest looking thing. But that is, of course, Zeus. Our zebra bee, and he does. He's kind of stressed. You can see that little bit of a wobble coming in from the spider. So I won't piss him off too much. Uh, oh, he had to go at me from multiple feet away. Kurt, do you have any questions? Um, you said that you think you can make a white and black snake. I do. Are you going to elaborate on your thoughts of how to do that? Uh, or is that going to be a secret? No, I don't think it has to be a secret. And the reason I don't is because I think there's a guy that's kind of already done it. Oh my goodness, you hear that thing hissing at me? You put it in a ball. Okay, we're going to go ahead and put him up because he's so pissed. But, God, I just... I love this guy. I really do. He has no idea how spoiled he's really going to be. He'll always end up with the best of everything here. <laughs> he is the favorite. I say that about everything, and I don't have to because that's the favorite. How I think we can do that is, one, we need to add another pastel chip. Okay? So that super pastel helps to clean that up a lot. Now, that alone isn't going to get us there, I don't think. But if you take that super pastel and then you add fire to it, now you're cooking. Okay? I think if you put fire to it, and I think yellow belly to it to clean up even further, you could probably also substitute the yellow belly, maybe the orange dream. Although the orange dream, because it's more of an orange than a yellow, may actually darken it a little bit at that point, which I'm going to want to avoid. But I, I do think that... A fire, yellow belly, super pastel, spider, exanthic, would be a black and white snake that stays barbed wire. I, I do. May it have a little speckle in it? Sure. But it's going to lighten that up a lot. It's going to look amazing when we get there. And how are we going to do it, you ask? Well, this is going to be a big help. This girl right here. Come here, darling. I know. Her ask a question, now i got to piss you off and mess with you. She is kind of a key to that. She is a fire yellow belly. She is currently gravid, so I'm not going to keep her out very long. And she has been bred to a pastel exantic from the same line. So, basically, what's going to happen is if she has females, I'm going to keep most of them. I'm going to take him and bring him back to those females. Now, he will be completely unrelated to the children from there. So that's really cool. We can then, if we need to breed back, we can without any issue because we're talking completely unrelated snakes. So, I mean, I guess if you track all the way back to SK where the line started, they're probably like 47th cousins. But we'll be able to do that. So I'm really excited about that. And what that can bring in there right there is a possibly a fire, yellow belly, and the other pastel gene I need to go with that. Of course, the odds are going to be needle in a haystack. You know, we'll probably have to take a few generations to hold them back. Some with those genes that pop up visual to get exactly what we want. But we'll, we'll eventually get there, I think. Any more questions, Kurt? No. All right, guys, thanks for watching. And again, uh, these are just the snakes that, so far at this point in our season, that I think we're the most proud to have hatched. They're the ones that I look at. And I love everything we've hatched. I'm really excited about a lot of the things we've done. And every little baby is like a Christmas present. But... Those are the ones, you know, like some Christmas presents are better than others. These have been my favorites so far this year. Uh, so anything we missed, Kurt, anything you think we should show is one of our favorites. No. All right, guys, thanks for watching, and we'll give you some herbs next week.